365 guys shake my hand hope you guys are doing well um by now i'm hoping you've already watched the number 45 traders war room number 45 of cot data uh, i won't even lie it took me forever to get through that and i feel like there might be a need for a part two if you are taking the academy course remember it's going to be thoroughly built into module three so don't worry but I've been in my office since about 6 a.m. today from the Money Heist podcast to stuff for tomorrow's team to preparing for the war room. So I thought I'd film this outside just to get a lot of cold air. The time now is 6.30 p.m. South African time. So I'm hoping just to be outside for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I just want to go through at least six to seven assets together so that we know at least something and then tomorrow i'm going to do another war room and then tuesday wednesday i'm going to just keep rolling them out until we're done with all class sets uh class assets sorry and then and then from next week sunday when we meet right so the very first live traders war room where i'll be there live with you i can quickly pull out my calendar um and i hope you guys can hear me and look man it's 6 30 pm and in the neighborhood i'm at that's generally a good time for people to start walking their dogs and i've got two crazy rottweilers in the background so you'll you'll hear some dogs barking in the background right so on the 23rd of sunday next week sunday is the 23rd we'll have a live traders war room together but we'll have gone through all these assets this whole week so every single video i'm gonna drop this week matters so please stay tuned right so let's quickly if i can quickly just switch to trade view right and i'll be looking at aud nzd uh, which is my first asset of choice in the cluster that I've been looking at. Remember, I've spoken to you guys about trading in clusters. I've spoken to you guys about a lot of important things in today's recording in war room number 45. So please, the video, this video, stop watching this one and watch this one first, because everything else I'm about to say is based on your understanding of this video. It is the first video you have to watch from 365 this year. If you're new to the channel, start with this video, the one I'm pointing to up here. Open a right, right click, uh, 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 right click it to a new tab pause this current video watch that one first then come back here because whatever signals you get from me they have to go into that the, the stuff in there the trading in clusters the proper plan so that you can actually track yourself to track if i'm right to track if you're right to track if your account is growing it's very fundamentally important the other thing about doing war rooms as the new year rolls in is traders avoid this thing of something new is going to happen right Crypto is going to pump. It's going to make another set of millionaires in the early phases of adoption. We are now in the early phase of adoption. This is literally, you're running out of days to, to, to join that wave of crypto millionaires. Currencies are going to continue moving in the direction of supply and demand. Some of the trade signals I'm giving you, look, I, I just opened this chart right now. Look at it. It's bouncing off a supply zone. I only use FXCM on my traders' war rooms, which means we've discussed about this supply at some point in time. We've talked about it in last year's war rooms. And here it is now. This is war room number 46. So if you just go through my channel you'll find aud nzd somewhere along the line we spoke about this thing being sold there some of you are not in it i'm not in it but but i'm not in it because maybe i was lazy but i'm saying you guys get these signals for free all right literally just all you have to do is to show up and watch write stuff down take the trade so some of you this is a, this is a beautiful trade that might be taking shape but let's remove everything given it's a new year right give it get a fresh perspective a fresh analysis out of this whole thing right so war rooms are different i don't do much teaching in war rooms i am honestly drained i am honestly drained this is jeez louise very ugly right so i remember this chart now right so on the governing time frame we can tell that price uh has kind of like stopped at a, a place of of serious supply with supply exceeded demand and if we really look at this chart holistically we can tell that this market wants to fall or has been falling rather from the 11th of february and now it's 2021 sorry 2011 feb and now it's 2022 right and we're moving towards feb so it's 10 year plan is almost done right so normally in assets like that we do expect some type of interesting change right we can see that this to me and i could be wrong but this to me looks broken it doesn't matter what kind of a trader you are, whether you're looking for break of market structure, whether you're, you're a BMT trader or supply and demand trader, if there was a demand here, it looks broken, right? So let me just remove, and sorry, I left my, my main trading station inside the office. It's encoding 
um, the War Room video. So by the time you see all of this, obviously both videos will be out. But right now, as I speak, my long video that I just did is in the office, you know, rendering and all that stuff. Right, so there you go. You see, there's a break of market structure here, which to me generally, generally sometimes speaks to a long-term, you know, point to the downside. That's number one. Number two, in video, I once again, please pause this video and go finish that one. I spoke, actually used AUD as a perfect example for everything I was talking about. So we do know that they've increased their sell orders if we're talking COT. So this is actually quite, you know, you know, telling. I don't like trading choppy markets. I don't like trading weak supplies, weak demands. I don't like visiting areas where prices repeatedly come to where i know there's something called grass effect glass effect sorry so i can tell you right now i i have no no interest in taking anything up here and i don't know if there's a need for me to waste money down here all right so in front of me if i look at the last three months we've got this is january december november we've got a bullish engulfing pattern that might need to get retested right so that might coincide with our thesis that there still needs to be a little bit of weakness in aud and then this might happen right who knows we'll, we'll investigate further but, but 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 for now this is literally a chart that is the least attractive thing to trade right so if we had a demand here we now know that that the particular demand here is broken and for us we know that means there is going to be movement to the downside sooner rather than later markets are going to want to keep pushing this thing lower why because they remove the demand why remove a demand if you want to go up right demands are there to keep propelling price up once you take out a demand you want to go down so i'm going to remove this zone because it doesn't exist not for me anyways and i could be forced to do something like this which i hate to do right i could be forced to say okay but Leroy, there's a demand there on a governing perspective and that is very true on the bigger picture i don't think it is a strong demand right if you follow my module two the last lecture i talk about strong supplies and strong demands and they have to do specific things in terms of market structure a strong demand has to remove an opposing area of value take out a supply and this demand has not done that it has not taken out an opposing area of value this demand when it when it arrived at a bearish engulfing pattern, which is right over there, respected it or is currently respecting it, right? So maybe it's too early to judge the month of January. Ugh, man, I'm so used to my to my mouse pad in the office. Um, I'm just out, literally just outside with a laptop. <laughs> right. So, so so this th this is what's happening here. Touch supply and now it got red, right? So price is insinuating that it might want to drop. So this is what I can ascertain here from the governing time frame. Overall, I think price will go down. Number two, we now have a governing supply, an immediate governing supply that's been, you know, operationalized. If I go to the weekly time frame, right, you'll then start to, to, to then draw much more accurate supply and demand zones, right? So I could say inside these two weeks of complicated 365 candles, they created the governing supply. And then I can draw a mayoral supply right there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please, 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 for your own sake, check out our course. It's on discount up until the end of the month of January. And then after that, there won't really be any discounts for the rest of the year. We did a lot of discounts last year. I did a lot of discounts last year and it didn't really impact the growth of the academy so because of that i now know that the academy will grow at an organic rate right where there's 10 people at a time five people at a time 100 people whatever it is uh but there's no need for me to sacrifice time for money okay so that's not something i'm not doing this year i've done it for two years in a row now right so on a weekly time frame there we go we had a weekly supply that was engaged insider governing supply i mean i'm teaching really this is like it's gonna mean i won't be able to get through a lot of assets so i'm gonna have to increase the pace in our war rooms i don't teach in other videos i teach here i'm just here to give signals right so there's a clear fall here for me on the weekly time frame i don't see anything stopping price from falling up until this level right only if price was to get here if i was trading this whole thing right that's where i would start to worry when price gets down there so now let's see if there's real muller to be made right so this is about a, a almost 100 pip drop right so that's, that's that's good that's not too bad right so on the daily 
Right, so then we get to the daily time frame. What do we have on the daily time frame? Well, we have the same area of value that we marked up in the previous war room. One of those war rooms where we did say when price gets here, we're going to sell. And it's I say that because when I start when I uh, you know opened this chart, this area was already marked out for a potential sell, which means our trading strategy allows us to see price move in a very particular way, weeks if not months are well ahead of time. If you watch the previous video that I've just told you to go back to, you'll realize that you can now even predict that at a a higher degree right so so i talked about institutional bias i gave you guys formulas i gave you guys a master trade spreadsheet um, um all this beautiful stuff but there's a daily supply right there that has been engaged and has been hammered thoroughly right so real quick because it is technically our first war room together maybe i should take it nice and slow you will see you'll notice that this daily supply has done its part i mean it's a bearish engulfing candle it is generally good for two touches a fresh touch and a retest and now it is suffering right it is really 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 suffering right so price moved and eventually moved got a fresh touch and markets are struggling to leave so this is my first red flag uh so to speak you know I, I would be a little worried here i'm not too too surprised that it's doing that remember we saw a lot of uh, unnecessarily unclear patterns on the bigger time frame a lot of choppiness but i i, I would not be in a in a massive rush um um to, to, to give this thing a lot of my money right so if, if i was to go through uh, uh, uh the specific group of kennels called a kinhashi that average out things and remove as much noise as possible you realize that there was something close to a true supply here which was eventually broken and markets are trying to break out a little bit higher you remember that markets did leave a bullish engulfing pattern on the governing time frame but currently engaged in in a governing supply and a weekly supply but when we get to the daily time frame we don't have that type of confluence lining up what we do have is a higher sell point somewhere here that's what we have that's number one and and and, and if you follow me you always know that the obvious buy or the obvious sell is probably not the best one right you always want to buy high uh, sorry buy low sell high type of situation and i will apologize again it is to seven now um there are a lot of people walking their dogs in my neighborhood so my dogs are gonna want to keep saying hi to those dogs so if i was to remove these zones for now Let's say we forgo this current sell that we should have been in already. We're not in a trade right now. I'm operating as if we're not in a trade. I would I would bet money there. If I was to take this trade, I would bet money somewhere there. Beautiful engulfing pattern that looks very fresh, but there's no clear TP target for me right now. I wouldn't know where to exit. And that's why I'm a little bit hesitant, right? But yeah, for, for all intents and purposes, this supply has done its job, right? So who knows how long this will last, right? Price could fall. And if you're already in it, you have nothing to worry about because now is the perfect time to be, you know, locking uh, uh, your trade, breaking into break even. But for some of us who are not in it at all, you know, this is this is very worrisome. Is price gonna drop only up until there and then reverse back? Is price gonna continue down? Either way, for those who are in it, and have been in it for that long, then it's all happy days. If you're not in it, I would avoid selling here. I would wait for something like this. But then I would still need to come back next week to see if I can point out a, a far much more clear target, right? Uh, you know, within this trade here and probably map out a mayoral demand, uh, which, which does not exist, right? So I definitely like this zone. And then hopefully that can push us to the promised land, which would kind of like increase the pips, but would also test your patience, right? So that's AUD, NZD um, for now, right? AUD, NZD, I'm not sold that it's time to sell. I think it's time to wait a bit. I mean, we do have a touch here in the weekly, but I'd like a better touch uh, from a daily perspective, uh, so to speak, right? Cat JPY. Sorry, I keep looking at my dogs because they keep moaning. But I think it's because I'm outside. When I'm outside, they just think it's playtime. And I'm not playing. Right. Cat JPY. I do remember us talking about this. You know. Buy one hit. Um, I don't think I've closed it though. I probably should. <laughs> I honestly probably should, right? So so this we spoke about, right? So this is this is what the war room looks like, by the way, if it's your first time here um and let me just actually analyze this from a different chat so i don't mess up my current trade and then give perspective to those of you who would be new so so last year the theme for cad was remember we're tracking cad with oil and if you 
maybe in part two of the cot report video i just did today when we talk about oil we'll actually track when they close their long positions and why they close their long positions um but anyways the point was cad and oil are two peas in a pot all right so when when oil is doing well cad generally should start to do well and we saw cad really do well uh, you know, last year of 2020, 2021, it's just been a brilliant, you know, good year, strong year, strong finish for the Canadian dollar. Um, but like all good things must come to an end or at least take a breather. So CAD JPY arrived at a governing supply somewhere here. You can see that it is attempting to break it. It hasn't. If it does successfully break, and then I expect a continued run. Naturally, this will be very much dependent on a lot of fundamental stuff uh, on how institutions see CAD, oil, um, 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 and, and that entire saga going. But this, is, this will be the next you know, logical spot for CAD. So in the traders war room and in my trading signals that I gave out last time, I definitely thought buying CAD JPY was a fantastic idea as long as you didn't get caught out, you know, you didn't buy too late if you bought when I told you to buy and when I told you to buy. Now, this is the signal that I gave and this is where we are. So price is starting to fall. Part of me, you know, when I was looking at this over the weekend, um, you know, a part of me wants to close, a part of me does not want to close, a part of me wants to see the uh, the four is to one. What, what could potentially happen if you're already in this trade is you, you might actually get price, you know, really pulling back all the way there, right, like that. And then maybe making its way up. And, and if you're like me, I don't never want to sacrifice a good trade, a good position, because you can imagine how long it took to sit and wait for this and how much money I've invested in it, um, how many positions on different accounts, lot sizes, all that stuff matters. So, it, 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 you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, I would suggest this. So first of all, now I'm talking to people who are currently already where I say daily buy one, we had one fresh touch and then now in the retest. And the retest, guys, has really done its job. I mean, this is the leg. Remember let's talk about uh, markets and their legs and their faces. This is the supply for this leg that we bought out to. This is just me and my long-term positional wishful thinking, right? So if oil was super strong right now, I would still be very bullish with this target. You understand if oil was very very strong i'll still be like yeah yeah let's get it but the the point of the matter is the reason why we marked the zone red last time is because we have to respect the fact that this is a very interesting let's go to the weekly time frame it's a very important place for the market it's a very strong supply that's been put in place there in november 2015 where markets failed to break through september 2017 uh, uh, January 2018, again, there was an attempt last year, October 2021, and here we are back again. Now, obviously, more tries in the zone tell me that the zone is getting weaker, which tell me that it's worth a while buying. So I don't want to lose out on that, right? There is more to, 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 to this particular trade if I was to, 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 to make move. Uh, to, to hold sorry and, and make the money what i want to do is to have a good adjustment of my risk so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw in the fibonacci right swing low swing high find my golden ratio right my golden ratio is somewhere here and then i'm going to highlight this which is just outside my entry point and i'm going to also highlight the 50 percent mark like that and i'm going to see if i can find a corresponding order block right because if i can then that's great and i'm going to delete my fibonacci and then i'm going to go back to normal candlesticks i hope i hope this is fine this is a long time since i've done charts on one laptop one screen normally i've got the whole setup um right so you can see you know our golden ratio order blocks correspond very well so what i would do tomorrow when markets wake up and and just be stress-free is i am going to assume that price will come back to retest uh one of these order blocks although this bullish engulf in the bottom was retested by that and then price exploded up i'm going to have a a, a protection zone here and what this protection zone does is simply to say leroy at the end of the day the only way to lose money is when markets go against you or when you do something stupid. So all I'm going to do for buy one is I'm going to take buy one and I'm going to put my stop loss just below this order block right there, just below, and then allow 
you know, price and time to work its magic. So for the next two weeks, if markets want to come all the way down here, that's fine. And then they use these order blocks to push back up to break that area of value, I'll be much appreciated. If they don't and they break down there, I'll exit with whatever little profits I've made from this particular trade, which will cover my swap trades and swap charges and all that beautiful stuff. And then I will proceed to wait for buy two. Either way, as far as I can tell, I should still remain bullish on CAD JPY. The thing is, which one of these trades is going to take us to the promised land? So all I'm doing here, for example, trade one, I'm pushing my stop loss a little bit up there. I don't think I want to engage in a second trade here. I could, right? That's how some, that's how a, a quick way to compound and grow your account. I'm not really much of an aggressive trader. I wanna see this asset through, number one. Number two, I actually haven't looked at oil charts in a very long time since my holiday. So right now, I, I would also need to balance that with oil, okay? But I don't mind waiting for buy two to be triggered if, I get kicked out of pro in profits up here. All right, so I'll be kicked out in little profits, but but it, it, it's kind of like worth it. Now, if I go to the governing time frame, just to remind us again, or remind myself, to be honest, let me just choose a different chart that has least, it's getting cold, man, woo. It's 10 to seven. I'm going to get into so much trouble for being late for dinner in the house. The house that's literally right behind me. My partner runs a tight ship. <laughs> <laughs> right, so check this out. I mean, it's a weak governing supply, but it's not yet broken, right? But it is weak, right? Number one, number two, there is clear, clear direction to, to, to want to come dock up here, right? So, so I, I remain quite bullish. I remain quite bullish. Um, pretty sure Carol is back in the office, so she must have paid for my trade view pro. Yeah, okay, cool. I've got the three months chart. Right, so there you go. There's a, a better supply here. There's a better three months supply here that has not yet been engaged on the three months chart. Banks think in three months, take profits in one year in a 10 year plan. Right. So, and this is a bullish pattern, right? So, so, so on the daily, we might just be seeing what price needs uh, uh, this month of December to do to just simply pull back a little bit down, either somewhere here or here. We drew the Fibonacci together. Let's draw it again. And then from down there, if you haven't bought when I told you to buy, if you're not part of the academy, you don't have those signals. All our signals are going to go into the remote course. I've got phase one, phase two is coming out based on these trades, um, et cetera. So I, I, I type out all signals. I mean, in the next video, I'll show you what that looks like. But basically, I would suggest you wait here if you're taking this trade for the first time. If you're in it, break even, get some profits, are locked, and then let's wait and see. All right, so that's CAD JPY, uh, Euro JPY, and maybe tomorrow's war room, we should actually have a look at all the currency indexes. All right, so we wanted to sell, and I won't even lie, man, I was hurt because price turned before triggering me. All right, so Euro JPY, my pin in order was just somewhere here. I wanted to take the sell and I see price. But last year, Euro USD did the exact same thing. All right, last year, USD did the exact same thing, turned just before, came back after a week, triggered the actual right place and then dropped. So right now I am not in this trade. Um, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen, all right? But if we can do a, a war room analysis for those of you who don't have pinning orders or just to double check, maybe it's time to change our minds about the trade. You will remember that Euro was weak the whole of last year. We kept saying Euro is gonna fall and Euro just kept falling, right? Those of you who tried to buy and got burnt, uh, really hoping this year you invest in actual market knowledge, right? So this is Euro JPY, All right? So this is probably like the 2008 crash, right? So you can see this profile is slowly starting to change, right? We are in that lost decade. Uh, uh, this is year two of the lost decade. You'll, you'll, you'll see why it's called the lost decade soon enough. Inflation has gone up. CPI data is crazy. DXY was falling last week because of the inflation scare that markets gave on Thursday or Friday. I can't remember when that, on Wednesday when the news release came out, right? So markets are literally in a panic. It's only human beings who, who, who always pretend like this thing doesn't happen, right? This, this is way too far for now. But 
as you can see, what markets have been doing on, on, on a bigger time frame scale, slowly but surely, one small order after another is breaking market structure. There, there was a break of market structure. There, there was another break of market structure. All right, so, 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 so it's almost as if price is trying to regain something. And in doing that, allowing for these amazing liquidity rates before price drops, right? So I'm not yet convinced I should change my profile on the asset, but I do know that price is creating higher highs. I do know that, you know, for the most part, you know, this thing is moving, you know, dangerously and steadily to the upside. And maybe that's something that one cannot afford to ignore anymore, right? In terms of supplies um, and demands, I would definitely suggest there was a supply there and i'll suggest that that's the currently supply at play that's why originally um, um uh, excuse me originally i have a sell position a sell bias to, to this particular asset right so this is what i was looking at British and golfing pattern price eventually left price came back price is struggling to go down and then there was this weird bearish and golfing pattern right there which is almost difficult to see or, or actually difficult to characterize, but this is definitely a breaking off in pattern after a beautiful fall and a retest, right? So there's glass effects being put uh, in, in their natural place in this February 2018 supply and markets are dropping. And then we get a retest of this bearish and golfing pattern and then markets are dropping in January. So what would be nice to see in Euro JPY before price goes up for the ultimate, you know, high is for price to at least make it here. Because remember, like I said for you, if you look carefully at the characteristics of this asset, it's starting to create higher highs, but you need to understand time frames and phases in the market. So this is a low. La, 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 la. This is another low. Well, it's a higher low, anyways, and this is a higher low. So what I'm saying is a nice low here, hitting this demand there, right, would result in another bounce there, and that's kind of like what I want to get into. I want to get into the sell down and the buy up, uh, for the first financial quarter of the year. It might even take longer than that, but I'm looking into this this type of sequence downside then correction into the supply and maybe a breaking of the supply that we might get to see uh, uh uh later on this year all right but but for euro jpy that's that's what i'm looking at like so if i can just quickly just to save time go to a chart that i've already analyzed already have marked up so this is what it looks like on the daily on the on the governing time frame the exact same thing that i've told you right i've drawn you a trend line here that we spoke about last time See the trend line right there that we spoke about that price has now broken to the other side of and its significance on the weekly time frame, you on the on the mayoral time frame, rather, we can see that there was a supply there that got engaged. That's what broke the trend line. And markets were trying to come back to retest. And maybe, maybe I was stingy. I don't know. Maybe I was too strict with the rules. But for me, where my red line was, was a perfect place to wait for price to come to. I, I honestly can't see the mistake I made. It's just that these things happen where price can leave you behind, especially if you're incredibly try to be incredibly accurate with your trades, right? So, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? So for now, I mark this as being left behind. However, remember, as price is going down, it will occasionally want to bounce back up. And when it bounces back up, it will occasionally want to come back to a better place. So I can't see a significant demand to do that. That's why I feel like I've, we've, I've, we've missed this opportunity in this trade. I, I don't know, It'll, I'll, I'm gonna leave the pending order on the drawing board, but I, I can't see why price would, I mean, by the time price comes back down there, all the way here, I must be very careful to sell now because now there might be a trend reversal. What I want is for price to, to, to come there, but only if price stops somewhere here, you know, if price was to do something like that, come here to collect more sell orders, then absolutely I'm keen to sell because then, then we're going to complete the M or whatever pattern you're looking at. But if price is to first to come all the way down, then I really should be worried about a, a potential trend reversal, right? So I'll be keeping track of that and come back with the with an update. And again, if you're in the remote course or joining us, the actual signal whether I'm going to buy or sell will be plugged in up there with the exact entry points and all that stuff. Pound CAD, pound CAD, pound CAD. Right. Oh, yeah. OK, cool. So there's nothing to do now. We're, we're holding. I hope everyone is holding. There's honestly not much to do. Um, 
again, this is this when I was reviewing these charts on Friday, finally trying to warm back up. Most of these trades, I, because they are last year's and COT was delayed by a week and, you know, banks are still trying to get their feet wet. A, a, a big part of me thinks most of our positional, most of our profitable trades, we should move them to break even. But we spoke about this last time. There's a sell area of price has been setting for the last, you know, since as soon as January started from the fourth or something, I remember being triggered here. There's a beautiful bracing off in pattern right there that's currently engaged. And we'll only know at the end of this week, you know, if it's going to hold. If it does hold, this will be a perfect, perfect run to the downside. But yeah, on Monday, pound cat as well, I'm going to break even, you know, just in case. Um, just in case, just in case, just in case markets wants to reset and, and you know, do a big rally up and then comes back down. But for those of you who are not in pound cat and looking to get into pound cat, remember guys, I don't sit and prepare war rooms the day before because they already take time. So you have to kind of like, almost subscribe and and follow this thing weekly because this some of these signals we've given them already and we've been waiting for some of these things to happen right so on, on a bigger time frame if you remember we drew this line saying there was a massive consolidation which are kind of like charts i hate to trade and so you'll note that on pound cat i went in with a very small lot size right nothing above 0 0.20 nothing nothing wild like a 0 0.20 or 0 0.18 something silly like that because a I had a, I've in 2021, according to my trading channel, the, 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 the top losing trades for me were pound JPY. And I don't even know if I should fix that this year or if I should just take a break from pound JPY in its entirety. But it messed up my, my feeling around pound. I love pound and I love the pound. It's easy to trade, et cetera. But still for pound JPY, uh, I had about four to six losses the whole of last year. I'm like trying to just get that perfect sell on pound J point. And, and every time I did, I would accumulate, uh, you know, a little bit of loss there. So, 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 so because of that, you know, I started going a bit light into, into pound pairs in case of something I was missing. But you can see here, there's this crazy consolidation where, and this line is not even drawn properly, where, but however you want to draw it, you know, correctly and all that stuff, there is definitely an undeniable break of market structure. I don't know if you guys can hear my little girl screaming her lungs out. Uh, it means someone is trying to feed her. She's such a fighter. Right. Okay. So, so we've got pound pound cad there in the in the, in the horizon, right? And it's it it really doesn't look like the world's most promising sale. That's why I'd very much prefer to break even zero out in the position, um, or you know take profit, take the first ten pips off, um, um, just to cover you know running costs like swap charges. But we've only been running for a few days, you know, since the beginning of February, and we should be down or rather up seventy five pips. So take the first 10, 15 pips to cover whatever it is that you want to cover, but just be very careful because price is currently negotiating with the lower supply. And if it wins, right, which is what we wanted to do is we wanted to run up here, you know, and then we're talking about a good pullback, which might be there. And then if that holds, then we, we might get that sequence, right? But it's nice to see that these trades that we spoke about last time are doing well. If it's your first time watching our war rooms or it's your first time trying to engage in pound cad I, I mean i don't know what to tell you you are looking at a risky trade if you if you wanted to get in tomorrow when the markets open you're looking at a high risk trade i've dialed this down to h4 and you are looking at selling somewhere here which has already happened unfortunately right so that's how markets close markets close with a big lunch this area which is very comforting for for for, for me or those of us who sold inside this yellow zone right prefer it be right at the top of the yellow zone but even if you sold somewhere here at the tip of the yellow zone right there's now a new supply right supply upon supply upon supply create a ladder going in your direction so in this case going down so it'll just be a case of watching monday is too early to tell this little liquidity on monday so monday tuesday wednesday we'll now know for sure if we're on the right side of price um but yeah i'll just break even just in case and then start to adjust as i go by all right so so not much again for those of you who are joining us late as if you're a cowboy and you want to start selling immediately stop loss has to be outside there and you have to have a good perception of risk to reward ratio right it's just 10 times better to 
once you join the academy by the way all these signals are completely for free i don't sell signals to students i don't sell signals to anyone um um, um so it, and then you get to see the stuff way ahead of time plan your capital plan blah 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 right so let's go to nzd swiss franc right so we got destroyed here it seems why don't i remember this trade I don't remember this for some odd reason, but it, it, it definitely might. Uh, yeah, we got child here. I just wonder why. I, I'll have to come back and review why I don't remember it. I hope I took the buy. I, I definitely should have had a pin in order. So maybe I got stopped out and I didn't, it was nominal because I, I don't use big lot sizes, right? So maybe my 5% of my 1% or 5% was quite a nominal hit, but this was supposed to be a beautiful trade to the upside. So I would like to actually dissect NZD Swiss franc just to get a clearer picture of what happened right so we bought too early we bought too early i bought too early and i told you guys to buy too early if those of you followed suit right okay fine so yeah okay fine so 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 it was not there was no confluence right the, 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 yeah bought way too early there was no confluence uh i'm surprised that might have been me trying to push a short-term trade but really the the honest to god truth is there was no confluence right almost touching a zone is not the same as touching a zone right so here um was the the the, the issue of lack of patience maybe all right trend lines coming very close doesn't account for anything the true buy zone is in the green zone and price has not yet arrived there so what i was supposed to do was just to wait what we were supposed to do here is to wait, right? So markets have broken out of a bearish structure, right? So, so don't be surprised if you see me trying to buy again. NZD Swiss franc, I definitely will be back for you. NZD Swiss franc, I believe uh, I, 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 I need to pay the visit and buy again. I don't know if you guys can tell in the background, it's getting a little bit darker and darker, right? So that's the weekly adjustment and the daily adjustment. So you see here, even on the weekly time frame, look at that. This is a seller's accumulation. So I literally, literally bought when price was consolidating. Uh, well, in hindsight, anyways, now I know that price was consolidating for another sell move to the downside, right? But for the most part, we bought way too early, right? So, so it's nice to know we've got an actual signal uh, uh, to wait down there, right? So something like this, we do a good MTA, we find a good place to wait on the daily time frame. By the way, our war rooms will start to include one take a week of the crypto markets, right? So after I do all the currency assets week by week, so next week I'll go live, say on Sunday for all the currencies and maybe Monday we do some crypto uh, live again. For those of you who are interested, I'm very much interested. Um, um, uh, it's just that my portfolio right now is extremely unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a terrible investors portfolio. I'm like 60% all in on crypto, 30% in on growth stocks and high growth fund stocks and dividend stocks. So, you know, share that basket. So I want to start taking profit a bit and then spreading that thing around, even it out to, to about 50% and then start to grow that crypto portfolio again, right? Um, uh, and also because the dip is almost over and it's almost time to buy in the crypto market, which means the wealth in three years program, by the way, starts again, right? So we didn't have one in November and December because I was anticipating the current meltdown that's happening. But just because we didn't have a wealth in, in three years note in November and December does not mean those two months go on your, on your, your, your one year contract, right? So as far as you are concerned, you've only had one month of it, not three months, right? If I don't send a note, for that month, it means I didn't invest. Remember, the whole point is you do what I do, right? You kind of like want to copy the, the, that particular thing. So I can't, I can't include a month where I didn't send out a note. Okay, so so you still, those of you who've been patient, it was because I I thought Bitcoin was going to do a fifty percent drop. It did forty three, right? So there was no point in buying into because we're all going to buy into that top Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and all that stuff, and then get slammed forty three percent and like. Even as long I, I like to hold, but even that is disgusting to watch as it's happening. Right. So so we are really there's an uh, there's some competition for money on this leg here of where to buy. As far as I can tell, there is competition right there. So let's get that clear. Right. So yeah, so I'm gonna buy 
just in this zone here inside the monthly weekly zone that protects me and then probably have a stop loss right outside um and this is going to be a, a beautiful long-term trade right so let this accumulation finish let them break to the downside those of you who are cowboy traders feel free to find sell positions in here feel free to find sell positions in there um i yeah i have no interest um number one because i lost a trade on nzd swiss franc so i and for trading psychology purposes i must give myself a break from this pair uh even though i don't even remember uh, 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 mentally acknowledging, uh, uh, you know, a loss here, right? So 5% thing, not a big deal, but a good buy somewhere inside here is going to be crucial, right? So just watch out for that. We keep studying the pair, wait for a better drop, um, and then we take it. Uh, NASDAQ 100 is the second last thing I want to talk to you guys about, but you know that the move has already happened. The one that I said was going to happen has already happened. So we had a strong push up here and then markets took that back and then markets took that up. I was in this one, like I told you I would, I posted it on, on Facebook, but I told you about it in my video, the Bitcoin video, but I told you about it last year on the 29th of November. And the reason why I got out was quite simple. Right, so price came in six, seven hundred points on the NASDAQ was beautiful. And where was that one hour supply that I saw? There we go. And on one hour time frame, there was a one hour supply. So as soon as we got in here at 15,200, oh, beautiful run, eight, almost 1600. That's about 800 points. Uh, so as soon as I saw that uh, price coming up to that, I locked profits after this dip somewhere here, and then I got stopped out in the process and price was coming back down. So I'm currently not on NASDAQ. I didn't take this retake because I do not trust it. Um, I, I also will let you know that on the COT reports, you know, there wasn't the strongest pump on this asset, man. I mean, it's like just building momentum, but not a strong bias. Uh, January, however, is a very good month for equities, for, for things like stocks and NASDAQ. So in January, we have what we call the January effect, right? Because stocks are reopening, blah, 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 blah. Did they do more than they did last year? And that sends a nice fever. So I wouldn't be surprised if we revisit these highs. I would not be surprised if we do but it will not be very methodological so there's going to be this then it's going to be that and then there's going to be this and then maybe i don't know some type of thing and then eventually something like that right so 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 finding good buys now and having the capacity to hold is very key right remember we still have to talk about positional trades and and, and i be, do believe these assets are really good now what i am worried about is how convincing price was willing to come to destroy this demand on the daily time frame right the, this is a demand that i spotted in november and i i like that price made us some money or made me money and those of you who took the trade yeah, uh, uh, but also you know just be very careful when price leaves an area of value violently and digs thoroughly deep right like why what's the aim because after that there's nothing there's my old zones where i bought from last year right which those positions i came out of a long time ago so we now need to investigate the possibility of the markets wanting to return somewhere all the way down there in the tech stock bubble right and right now if you talk to you know nasdaq gurus and all these global experts and your mentors on forex pages they'll probably tell you that this it's incredibly impossible for nasdaq to come back to 15100 1500 etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think it's not i don't think it's that impossible but check the h4 time frame um And all these lines that you see in front of you are part of a 365 strategy. It's not support and resistance. We don't trade support and resistance in the academy. We like our money. Yeah, look, man, I, I do believe there is a lot of room for price to come back down as far as I can tell. The imbalances, the unfilled orders speak for themselves, right? But you could also get a bounce just to this level here. So, you know, this is a trade I'll take at, what's this? I'll take a trade here at 15,100, but it's a trade I'm willing to lose money, right? Really lose money because it's a floating demand. It's not a strong demand, it's a floating demand. And this particularly floating demand didn't do really a representational job of breaking a strong supply. It did break the supply. So maybe, maybe price will come back here. But if price takes this out, then I'll wait down here at 14,800. So for NASDAQ, my next buys are here and down there. 
All right, this one, I'm not as confident about it, right? I expect to take a, a marginal risk. So I'm gonna make sure I risk, you know, carefully here. If a price comes this low, this is a trade I probably won't close unless price kicks me out. This is the positional trade. If price comes at 14,800, this green area here, this is a trade you wanna hold for the whole year. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You open a separate account. You allocate enough capital to trade indices. You use 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and you forget about it. Simple. You don't ever go back to that account. If you need, if your car breaks down, you act like you don't have that account. If you want to be rich a year from now, that's the game plan. Right, you always make a plan as a human being, but if you keep coming to your trading account and treating it like an ATM, you will always lose money. Right, so somewhere down here, 15,100. Remember, we always have 25 to 30 points leeway, and then we're going to try our luck there. And then after that, if that doesn't work, we're going to wait for price to come all the way down there and wait we shall because price will come back. The last assets uh on today's list is gold so i'm, I'm just following my my trade plan for my plan so so that's why uh and it keeps the war rooms sync and straight to the point and also manageable for someone who's been recording and talking since 6 a.m guys you'll understand i am tired right so we spoke about gold last year guys and we spoke about gold was leaving a, a monthly governing demand and we must look out for it and we'll see if it's weakness da 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 da, da. And we spoke about the dangers of just because the dollar is strong, the correlation is gold must fall, but also you must trade these assets uh, and give them their own respect on the charts. Because if you look at COT, smart money has been pumping dollar and gold up. Yes, sometimes it'll drop. But if you look at the governing time frame, it hasn't been taken out. The only thing that's still in charge on gold is a demand, right? So until this governor is taken out, you know, you've got big problems. Or until a valid supply is created, you've got big problems, right? So price did kind of like tap a supply to make this a bit clear for you. Right, there we go. So price did tap a supply here in November 1, no, not the most. And now we had a wick that needed to be filled, didn't even do a good job filling that wick. And now this is a consolidation and gold loves to consolidate because consolidations play with people's small accounts, right? So if you go to the weekly time frame, you get a bearishing coffin pattern, a retest. Price might drop this week. You also have a weak demand that's holding things down. On the daily time frame, I'm going as quickly as I can here, guys, because I know for a fact I don't want to do anything in gold. Um, my gold play is currently over. I have no intention. I, I'll do something in gold if price gets here as a supply and the dollar is done dropping and finds a demand. I'll do something there. I'll sell gold and buy dollar. But otherwise, uh, until then, these hanging moments in life, I'm fine with them. Guys, I appreciate you. This is not the only one. War Room 45, please watch that first. Thank you for watching War Room 46. Tomorrow, War Room 47 will drop. AUD CAD, Swiss Franc JPY, Euro USD, Pound NZD, NZD JPY, Silver, and Dow Jones. I'm going to walk you through all these assets this entire week so that we can go back to our routinely weekly live War Rooms every Sunday um, um, as we build our bank. So thank you so much. Shake my hand. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. If you did watch this and finish to the end, please comment and let me know. See you tomorrow early morning for our podcast. Uh, we're looking at the science of getting rich. Uh, all right, guys. Three, six, five. Cheers. Goodbye and good night.